From Barangaroo Studios, this is the COB, brought to you by eToro. Invest in ASX shares with $0 commission. Hey there, this is the COB, all the stuff you need to know about the day in business and markets. As always, I'm Kyle Rodder with Danny Akuyo. Danny, yep. we might close flat after all that. It looks like it was uh, going sideways towards the end. So let's just check in. Wow, one point. <laughs> I classify that uh, it is up the SIBO 200 up by one point. But nevertheless, a very good performance, I'd say. Started off with a lot of profit taking, mm -hmm. particularly in the banks, the financial sector. NAB clearly disappointed, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Yeah. But there was some buying, interesting, buying in real estate up 2%, uh, you've also got buying in utilities, buying in materials and buying in energy. So somebody wanted to go a bit upbeat today, yes. given the lead was pretty poor, hey? It's certainly hard to explain it, isn't it? Um, with that energy, you know, the, the drop in oil prices, you know, real estate still having its issues, but nevertheless, there were buyers out there to be found and uh, well enough perhaps to keep the market flat. But let's get to the three themes. I think because I th that'll more or less uh, define what uh, well the day, but also what we've got coming up now. And well, I think the first thing first is uh, the the uh, Fed hikes 25 basis points, uh, but really push back once again on the notion that uh, the, the central bank will be able to cut interest mm. rates any time soon. The markets are arguing with that. They are, aren't they? They're really arguing with that, and that could be some of the response that you've seen in some of the more interest rate sex sex. Sensitive, that's the cold. <laughs> Sensitive sectors today. Um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It is, and it, there, there seems to be a really um, clear effort from, from Powell to try and push back on that notion. And, and his rationale was effectively that inflation will remain stubborn and take a while to come down. But there are a lot of folks out there saying that we're actually heading for a pretty significant slowdown and that could be mm. you know, somewhat deflationary um, at, 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 at its worst. So yeah. um, you know, we're going to be talking about this for a very long time. We'll probably be talking about it until they actually cut. But uh, nevertheless, Powell pushed back on that. Uh, but the banks buckle. And, we banked, and, and there was two reasons behind that, wasn't there? There was the instability in, in US banks. Mm -hmm. and, um, might tie in your, your view there a little bit because you wrote about that today too. Um, and then, of course, there was those NAB results which were disappointing. Yeah, absolutely. And Australian banks are, are not what's going on with the US regional banks. But there is a real structural problem as far as I can ascertain. And uh, I've written about it quite extensively in the view. And that's not saying that we're heading towards a systemic crisis. But nevertheless, uh, these banks, these regional banks are not out of the woods because their deposits are not competitive relative to the money market. Obviously, Australian banks are completely different. Our deposit rates are very, very competitive to the cash rate. Um, and if anything, we've just got competition in the mortgage market and the deposit market here in Australia, which NAB highlighted, which I mm. thought was really interesting. They're like, whoa, we're not going to play in that mortgage space anymore. It's too aggressive. So yeah. clearly some banks looking to carve out market share. But I, I think the, the travails and the volatility out of banks is just, it, it's, it hasn't left yet. No, and it seems like it's going to be around for a little while longer. Um, and speaking of banks, central banks, uh, over to you, Madame Lagarde. We do have the ECB. This evening, uh, 25 is the call from most economists, but I'd say a non-trivial risk, perhaps you could phrase it as uh, that uh, they could go 50. Remarkable. If they, if, if they, if they go 50, or if it goes 50, uh, the refinance rate in or refinancing rate in Europe would be 4%. Wow. Crazy, right? Yeah. Almost gives a little bit of a colour as to why maybe the RBA felt compelled to hike uh, a couple of days yeah. ago. Because uh, could you imagine if, uh, if we had a cash rate of 3.6% here while Europe had a four in front of theirs? It would be it's, just It's, so it's really turned everything on its head, hasn't it? Yeah. Traditionally, we had a premium or, you know, a risk yeah. premium for Australian interest rates and not this time around. No, no, but no. fascinatingly enough, the German market's been the best performer mm. this year. Who would have thunk it? I would have thunk it indeed. <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's an interesting time. We are living in interesting times. But um, let's get across some of those factors again, just to have a, a bit of a visual on uh, how everything shaped up. And we'll look at the banks now. NAB was the worst. Mm. And, you know, again, it was a double whammy with the, those regional bank woes. But I mean, I don't know how deeply you dug into the actual uh, story there. The results were, were obviously quite disappointing, Miss, missed on, um, on, on earnings estimates there. And dividend, missed on dividend mm. expectations. And that is always going to hit our banking chairs because their Aussies love their bank dividends. 
So um, it was lower than expected. I think it was expected at 86 cents and it came in at 83. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, not, not pleasing investors there. Uh, you did speak about real estate before as well. And despite all the concerns that we still have about commercial property and I guess at least at the very least segments within it, uh, we saw some strength coming through today. So you can see their Dexas was up 3.5%. <coughs> they had been really heavily sold yeah. off earlier yeah. on in the week. So maybe just some people readjusting the portfolio yeah. on that one, I would have thought. And, and that's, I mean, you don't want to say this too uh, with any, I don't say this with any level of confidence because I've got no data to back it up. But you know, when you see some of those you know, energy stocks, real estate stocks, you sort of wonder if there's sort of you know short short trades being unwound as well, which yeah. you know sometimes can have those technical factors playing out. But I mean, only speculating there. But it is interesting that we're seeing some of these embattled names bouncing today. Um, but one that's just continuing its uptrend, and it has to be said that uh, the gold bugs. Uh, continue to have the last laugh. It's a little bit mixed on your screen there, but generally speaking, we are seeing gold prices move higher still. And well, Evolution Mining actually too, up 6.3% today, um, the, the outperformer, but Northern Star 2.2, Perseus 1.85, uh, DeGray and Newcrest, the outliers there that have um, given up uh, a little bit there, oh, uh, slim, slim, slim losses there. But um, Nab, we've spoken about that. A bit. Um, yeah. Super Retail was another interesting one. Yeah, downgrade. Too. That they've, they've had some problems, cost mm. imposts, and also the store rollout hasn't been going as well. And I know that had been a favourite for lots of people, but that was sold off as well today. It is the era. I mean, the, 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 it's confession season, and yeah. it's coming thick and fast. And as Roger Montgomery said, a lot of share prices are getting really heavily punished. So for investors, it's it's pretty volatile at the moment. Yeah, definitely. And uh, well. Well, we'll go back to now because it was the stock of the day and uh, earlier it was Andrew Gagan talking to Grady Wolf and Luke Winchester about whether they would buy the bank here. Look, as far as a buy, hold, sell for the program, like I thought the result was okay. Obviously, below expectations, outlook cloudy. Um, I don't think someone, if you've held NAB or you know for for a long time or currently hold it, I don't think you're rushing to sell on this result. Um, you know, it ticks all the boxes you're looking for as far as dividends and and you know the steady growth that you want. So I think you hold it. I don't think you have to panic and, and think there's any sort of systemic problem with the Aussie banks on a result like this. Um, hold at the moment. We're going through a bit of turmoil in the banking sector. So any news in the banking sector is, or any kind of signs of bad news are taken as bad news. And as Luke said, the results weren't actually that bad, but as soon as someone starts selling, everyone starts selling. It's kind of a waterfall effect here. Um, what we noticed was that the net interest margin is coming down. So it kind of indicates that net interest margin has peaked in the sector, especially for NAB. So it's at 1.77%, which was seven basis points below city expectations. Okay, so perhaps not the space to be playing in right now, the banks with so much uncertainty, but um, well, I mean, we're all exposed to them some way. And in the long run, they seem to be fairly stable, but um, clearly some turbulence ahead. But um, let's start with a discussion on our banks with our guest today. Henry Jennings from Markets Today joins us now. Um, Henry, great to see you there. Uh, how do you view the banks as far as their investability at the moment? Because clearly there are some pretty significant uh, headwinds that they're facing, both in terms of the earnings front locally, but there's these persistent risks in the United States, which if nothing else is hitting sentiment. Uh, hi, Carl. Hi, Danielle. Uh, yeah, the other day I wrote an article uh, which had the title The Hunting of the Snark. Uh, it should have been we're going on a bear hunt because that's what the US hedge funds are doing at the moment. They're basically picking off uh, bank by bank and focusing on the weakest links and uh, pushing them down. It's a great game. It's an easy game. They are uh, easy targets at the moment. And good, good news for the hedge funds is there's 4,700 US banks so they can push them down for a long time. As far as our banks go, I mean, they're in a very different situation, a very different balance sheet composition. Uh, the deposit base is very sound. You know, SBB, Silicon Valley Bank, lost $100 billion in deposits in about a day. That is extraordinary. There's very few banks that could really survive that kind of uh, exodus of money that quickly. Uh, today, of course, we have the National Australia Bank's results, which I've got to say, uh, when I previewed the banks in the newsletter, I was talking uh, about a solid result. And this was a relatively solid result, a little bit, 
below expectations, as you rightly say, Carl, especially on the dividend. But three cents, really? Three cents they miss on the dividend and they drop six and a half percent. I think that's a little bit of an overreaction. Clearly, there are issues going forward and the competitive mortgage environment uh, is the big issue for them. And we've seen that with our TVs bombarded with our little friend, the dragon, uh, sitting on the massage chair. And we've talked about it a number of times. Uh, so there's clear. It's funny, actually, I was looking back at the at the uh, commentary I wrote last year on Star Wars Day, because, of course, it's May the 4th today. <laughs> May the fourth be with you. And um, the oh, pressures on the banks for competitiveness was exactly the same last year. Uh, it was really interesting to see, you know, there was a lot of people doing free giveaways and refinancing deals and that sort of stuff. So that is, um, that is something that hasn't gone away. And the good thing about NABS is at least they did pivot quite nicely towards business banking, which uh, worked very well for them. Ross McEwen has done a pretty good job there. And it looks as if he's gonna hang around I did think it was overdone today, but uh, these things take a little while to wash through. But when you look at the performance of the Aussie banks, you know that they are very cyclical in lots of ways. The market loves them, then the market hates them. The market loves them, then the market hates them. And at the moment, the confluence of factors with this increased competition in the mortgage market, the fear of the mortgage cliff, the slowdown in consumer spending, couple that with the bear hunt that's going on in the US or the hunting of the snark, then, of course, it just makes it doubly difficult for them. But at some stage, they will offer good value. Of course, we've got ANZ and Westpac to come. The scene has been set, though. Let's face it, they will be solid, unspectacular, and warning of problems and competition ahead, uh, which is kind of what you would expect as well. So uh, I, I guess at some stage, as I say, they will provide good buying opportunities, not, uh, not just yet, perhaps. And for long-term investors in the banks that are mainly focused on the dividends, are you really going to be chucking your toys out for three cents in dividend? I don't think so. Yeah, it's interesting, Henry, because a lot of it could be, well, it could be a confluence of what's coming out of the US, a bit of risk off and people, as you said, throwing the toys out of the pram, maybe unnecessarily. Um, with the hunting of the snark, um, is the snark going to be absolutely, you know, killed? <laughs> is it going to get a lot worse over there? Because at the moment... I mean, despite what Powell said, um, you know, he came out and said everything's fine in the banking sector. And before you knew it, um, PacWest was, you know, is down almost 60% in the aftermarket. And you're absolutely right, the, the hedgies are going after it. it how, do, how do they break this cycle? Uh, that is a very good question, Danielle. And that uh, obviously is the key to this whole thing. The problem that Powell has got is that no one believes him. You know, the market is pricing in rate cuts, and he said there's going to be no rate cuts. So they don't clearly don't believe him there. The Powell has also said the, the banking system is solid and uh, well run, and clearly they don't believe him there because the Federal Reserve has been absolutely asleep at the wheel as far as regional banks go. And to stand up at a press conference and say everything is good while the world is falling around your, your feet does seem a bit Nero-like, fiddling while Rome is burning. <laughs> What will break this nexus, I don't know. Obviously, the regulators have really got to get on top of this, stress tests, all that sort of stuff. But that takes time. Banking is about confidence. And at the moment, confidence in the regional banks in the US is not high. They are easy prey. Uh, they are just sitting there on the savannah, little deer. And there are people out there hunting tigers and lions. Actually, you won't get tigers on the savannah. But you will get lions out there. Um, looking for easy meat, taking down easy praise, the wildebeest. So I, I think it's going to continue. I'm not sure how you counter it. You know, when we saw the GFC and, and the sort of the nadir there of the market, you know, we did have Warren Buffett popping up and talking things up and buying big stakes in the banks like Goldman Sachs. Now, of course, it's the, uh, it's the annual general meeting, I think, this weekend, Sage of Omaha will be bringing out his ukulele. Maybe he will have something to say on US regional banks. Maybe that will help break the cycle. But at the moment, they are easy prey. They are just sitting out there under a tree, sunning themselves, waiting for the lions to strike. <laughs> Certainly are. Um, so let's talk about just the interest rate risks that investors have to deal with at the moment. Obviously, you write extensively for your, for your uh, subscriber base. And everyone gets a little bit nervous when rates go up and we lose 2% in, in the space of a couple of days. And, and we all sort of hark back to, I guess, last year and other cycles where this can be quite protracted. 
I mean, how do you kind of communicate or, or how should investors frame their thinking around this, this environment where clearly interest rate risk is so relevant uh, and maybe, you know, there could be further downside with equities if, if there's sort of this higher for longer interest rate environment starts to, starts to filter through? I think part of the problem, Kyle, is that we just got used to record low or even zero interest rates for too long and we assumed that was normal. It is not normal. 4% is normal. Having an interest rate higher than the rate of inflation tends to be normal. Uh, at the moment, we've got interest rates, what, at 3.85% here and inflation at 7%. That is not normal. So, you know, we, we fiddled around for so long and dithered uh, trying to ignore inflation. The biggest risk is not the interest rates going up, is that inflation becomes entrenched, interest rates stay where they are, and we do push ourselves into a recession. So that, that obviously is the more worrying thing. Or, of course, we could go down the Voldemort uh, pipeline in terms of the man that has, uh, or I shouldn't mention his name, is, of course, stagflation, where well, we don't want stagflation. And I'm sure that could be a word in the next six months as growth is pretty dismal. Inflation stays high, interest rates stay high, and we do get stagflation, which would be not an optimal outcome for any market. Indeed, stagflation. No one wants to hear that. Where would you be hiding at the moment, Henry? Uh, hiding? Um, With not, not, sure out the, not out in the savannah. Like if it's a risk. Not a out risk. in the savannah, no. Definitely not out <laughs> in the savannah. Um, well, gold's obviously been uh, one place to hide. I'm, frankly, to be honest, I've been a little bit disappointed with the gold sector. You know, we've got record high bullion prices, record high prices in Aussie dollars, and the gold stocks, okay, some of them are up 5% and maybe a couple of percent over the last few days. But really and truly, these things should be on fire. Uh, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that sector. Clearly, that's one to hide out in if that's where you want to hide. Uh, the other issue is uh, healthcare. That's another good place where people do tend to hide. Uh, telcos is probably another good place to hide as well. Uh, the likes of Telstra, I mean, to some extent, they are pretty much immune to, uh, to a recession. I mean, who's going to get rid of their mobile phone or downgrade their data plan, et cetera, uh, just because uh, interest rates go up a little bit? That's probably the last thing to go. They're like an umbilical cord. Why would you chop that off? <laughs> so uh, those sorts of things. And I think, you know, if we are going back to an inflationary environment, which we are in, at some stage, the China reopening story will kick in. It is sporadic and it is a little bit sort of spread out across the board and it's not really taken hold. But maybe as summer approaches, uh, that will help. And we could see some interest in the resource stocks generally. But certainly, you know, the banks at some stage will offer value. Not yet. Uh, the industrials have actually held up quite well. We saw some, uh, some good upgrades from one or two industrial stocks and some downgrades as well. You know, JB Hi-Fi, those numbers the other day weren't too bad, although they did warn of uh, problems to come. And we all know there's problems out there. So, uh, you know, there are places to hide at the moment. Of course, you just could go to cash, take six months off and uh, spend some money with Qantas and go to Europe. Yeah, just do what everyone else is doing and sit in a money market fund, perhaps, and uh, take advantage of that. I'm not too sure. But uh, Henry, really yeah. appreciate your insights, as always. We'll leave it there for another day. And uh, well, may the fourth be with you. Thank you, Henry. May the and with you. <laughs> Henry Jennings there from Marcus today. Okay, uh, let's push on and look at what's on tonight because we spoke about it before. But uh, over to you, Madam Lagarde. The ECB decision, 25.50. Uh, remains to be seen, but clearly there's an inflation issue there in Europe. And well, um, even... If they only go 25 tonight, there's still the sense that there might be a few more hikes to go. So uh, ECB's key refinancing rate there uh, could have a four in front of it in fairly short order. So that could be interesting. Um, but uh, we've also had unemployment claims. Apple's earnings uh, yeah. tomorrow as well, which will I be I think that's really, Im yeah, really, really important. Um, I'm scratching into my memory about Qualcomm's results today, um, which did send Apple lower mm. um, in the aftermarket. But yeah, um, this is a really, really important earnings announcement, I think, that, you know, it is the behemoths of the behemoths in the US market, and it obviously has a consumer slant as well, and a Chinese tinge and everything. So, yeah. yeah. It can knock technicals around too, right? Like, it it's, wouldn't be for the first time if we see a really big surprise that you see this sort of knock-on effect to other markets, even FX and, um, um, and, and other asset classes, just by virtue of, like you said, 
They've just got their tentacles and absolutely everything, a barometer of US consumer activity, but also strength of China's economy, supply chains, so many thematics there. So we'll be watching that really carefully, uh, which takes us to what we will look at tomorrow. In uh, Australia, we'll have the RBA Standard Ooh. Monetary Policy, some colour on the RBA's decision. However, big some results. Re- big results. Yeah, yeah, another bank there, Macquarie. And, That's uh, important. RBA. Yeah, huge. Yeah, I think Macquarie is really important because we have uh, had some bearish people there about some of their major divisions not firing on all cylinders. But ANZ also very important. Like, I think this results season, as you know, always, um, as well as the confessions, you know, they will move markets around REA. It'd be really interesting to see what they say because listings have been very low. Yeah, that ANZ one will be fascinating. So I think it was down a couple of percent today. But I mean, Clearly, investors are punishing misses. Um, you know, so there could be another two or three percent in that if, if we do see a disappointment. Then again, if it does beat expectations, well, you know, we always are, are overdue a balance. But we'll have uh, plenty to say about that tomorrow, of course. Okay, leaders and laggards, let's take a look. Start with the leaders as always. Focus on the positives and, well, few and far between, it has to be said. Evolution Mining, though, Mm. that gold story up 6.35%. Anything that jumps out to you there? Yeah, just interesting Magellan because they Mm. continue to have uh, fund outflows and their announcement. Yeah, and obviously it's a, it would look by the market reaction up, you know, three and three three quarter percent that not as bad as expected. Um, because, yeah, Magellan really has not had a lot of love lately. No, and it's, you know, hit from both sides, you know, from, from top and bottom where, you know, the business is, is struggling. There's that sort of key man risk and outflows because of uh, the fund's performance, but also, hey, it's, it's uh, a, an, an equity fund in this environment is always going to, to struggle um, quite, quite naturally. But, yeah, maybe it's a, a, slower, uh, a slower rate of outflows now. Mm. Perhaps investors are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, quite naturally, we uh, always hope that it's not uh, an oncoming train. Uh, but Life360, always a volatile one, up 5.5%. Calcium Group, another one that uh, we track quite carefully uh, as a volatile stock, uh, down at EDI as well. Uh, let's move on to the laggards because, uh, well, that is... Yeah, downgrade, hmm. super retail, guidance cut. They've got some problems there. NAB, well, we have discussed NAB in detail. Yeah, Zero Resources, that's it. It's, it's, uh, we, we had the production update a couple of weeks ago. Right. That must be at least 20, 25% lower than, than where it was before wow. that update because it was sitting around $1.30 per share. Um, you know, clearly mining stock, always going to be volatile. Um, again, again, 30, 30 cent move It's when, of a stock that size. It's, it's, it's not all that remarkable, but still, investors feeling, feeling the pinch there. And, yeah. Or Westpac being caught in what seems to be that, those banking woes as well, down, down 4%. And a big downgrade um, in terms of earnings expectations by Goldman's for mineral resources. Uh-huh. So uh, those delays in their major lithium projects is, uh, you know, they've got that a sell and a price target, I believe, of $53. So they are in the uber bearish camp. And yeah, uh, yeah Minres off 4%. Uh, back under that 70 US dollars, 68 spot seven. Yeah, Goldman's can't help themselves with those lithium stocks. They love just uh, taking shots <laughs> at them, don't they? Um, but anyway, down 4% there and uh, well, just how they owned. The reasons as to why. Okay, chuck the names in the hat, the small caps. Here we go. What have we got here? Uh, anything that jumps out to you? Anything that you uh, maybe oh. have in the in the in the high risk, high conviction small cap portfolio, the Akoya family fund? No, I have to say no. I'm not across any of these stocks, so it's a rather <laughs> embarrassing admission. No. But I've never heard of Cog Station. I can only keep about three or four things in my head at any one point in time. So good luck with all two thousand stocks on the ASX, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, there's. Uh, if you are interested in some of those small cap names, uh, there you are. It's on your screen. Uh, good on you if, if uh, you're, you're on the leaders board today. Uh, on the flip side of, the, uh, of things, uh, here are the lag guys there. Austin Engineering, I think that was on there yesterday as well. 16, uh, down today by about 16%. I could be, could be wrong, but um, again, I can let you uh, scan your eyes across the screen there to get a sense of whether, yeah, you've uh, caught the, the wrong side of uh, the market there with, with those names. But... Uh, Danny, we said it before, but it's probably going to be a pretty big night, both, uh, yeah. both macro and micro. Yeah, um, Apple reports after the close, yep. so it won't be reflected in uh, tomorrow's 
trading, our time, I mean, you know, tonight's trading yeah. in US markets. But yeah, really important. And I think clearly what happens in the regional banks, yeah. uh, Pac-Man is after those regional banks. Yeah, Pac West, Pac-Man, there's, uh, there's a meme out there for those who are a little bit more talented when it comes to your computer to try and, uh, to try and sort out. But um, well, obviously, we will pick it all up tomorrow morning. Remember, you can catch up on everything today on your website and app. May the 4th be with you. Yeah, may the 4th be with you. The COB is brought to you by eToro. Invest in ASX shares with $0 commission. Yeah.